And really and truly, you know, people, that's, uh, I don't know why, where I'm kind of getting on this at, but that's really the only hope we have for people. I'm coming more and more to a realization that each and every day that unless the Holy Spirit intervenes, that's right, amen. unless He shows up, amen. It's, it's, it's a waste. And I know you've been hearing me say that a lot lately, but I'm really being more and more convinced of that. Unless the Holy Spirit shows up in this place, there's nothing I can give you that's going to help you. Unless He makes that real to you, there's nothing I could do. And if that, the same thing goes with the world and people in the world who we witness to. Unless the Holy Spirit would show up and penetrate their hearts and that He would penetrate their lives, that He would make manifest His Word to their heart, there's nothing we can do. We can talk until we blew in the face. We can plead. We can beg. We can cry. We can do all these things. But unless the Holy Spirit shows up, Amen. That's right. Unless He shows up, it's all for nothing. And I just pray tonight that as I attempt to teach this, that I want to teach that the Holy Spirit would show up. Amen. That He would show up and He would manifest Himself in your heart and in your life. That He would manifest Himself in my heart and in my life in a way that He would make His Amen. Word real to us. Amen. That there would be a manifestation of His Spirit as He anoints His Word, as He anoints His plan, His redemption plan for us. I just pray that He would do something tonight in our hearts and in our lives because without Him, it's a waste. Without Him, this is for nothing. Amen. That's true. Tonight I want to go to the book of Galatians in chapter 5. I really feel like lately the Lord's been making some things real in my heart. And in my life. And He's really been showing me some things in my heart and in my life that I've known for a long time with my lips. And even in periods of, of time in my walk that I've been able to walk. But I just feel like right now He's making things so real. And I want to just teach a message tonight, preach and teach a message called walking in relationship. And I know over this last period of time, for some time now, I guess a little while, that I've been talking a lot about relationship. Personal relationship. You know, it's important that we pursue a personal relationship <laughs> with the Prince of Peace. Amen. He's Amen. the Prince of Peace. I don't, I don't care what's going on in your life or what troubles you. When the Prince of Peace shows up, he'll calm the storm. That's right, man. Amen. Just like Pete, what, let me just share with you what Pete was going to share with you earlier because it's some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Pete went over to Baton Rouge today and Brother Torrance Nash preached in chapel. And he preached about when Jesus, he, he, after he fed the 5,000 and he sent the disciples across the sea and he went up to the mountain to pray and it says about 3 in the morning, about the third watch, that the, that the storm, that the, the seas got rough and the, the storm was beaten and, and like Pete explained it when he was talking to me, it was almost like a hurricane was blowing in the seas. But what we've got to understand is that the Lord Jesus Christ, he sent the disciples that way. He sent them out into the midst of the, the storm. He didn't and tell him to hold up or wait up. He knew the storm was coming and he sent them out into the midst of it. And the reason that he did that was so that he could calm the storm for them. So that he could come out in the midst of their storm, in the midst of their trouble and build and strengthen their faith so that he can show them that he is the Prince of Peace. So that he could show them that he is the one that can calm the seas. And I'm here to tell you, no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what troubles you, or, or, or messes you up whether it's inside of you or outside of you the Prince of Peace he knows where you're at and he wants you to call out to him so that he can prove to you that he is who he says he is Amen. he'll calm those seas that's right that's good stuff, Pete. Oh, yes, Lord, God. Hey, man. Praise God. hallelujah that's good stuff he'll calm the sea amen, amen. he'll calm the sea but this Walking in relationship that I've been talking about. I want you to understand that everything we have need of today is a result of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, with God the Father, through what Christ did for us at Calvary's cross. Everything we have need of today in our lives, whether it be spiritually, and let's understand spiritually first. Our desires need to be spiritually first. We need to be spiritually minded people. Yes, we live on earth, but the Word of God says to set your affection on things that are above. Set your heart, set your love on things that are above, not on the things of this earth. We need to be a spiritually minded people. That's right. 
And that's also a result of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. As I stand up here tonight, I assume that we're all in a personal one-on-one relationship with the Lord. I assume that we've all been born again. I assume that He's come in and changed our heart. And that's where, why I want to teach what I want to teach tonight. Amen. But I want you to understand that everything we have need of can be found as a result of our personal relationship yeah, man. with the Lord. It can be found as that. And I want to talk about that a little bit tonight. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, the Word of God says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Listen, church, listen to this verse. For we through the Spirit We wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. If you have truly been born again, you've experienced placed inside of you a desire to live for God. A desire to please God. A desire to walk upright before Him. A desire to fulfill the Ten Commandments. A desire to to walk not thinking evil thoughts. Not doing evil things. That's been placed inside of you. A desire to do that. It's been placed in you. You wasn't born with that. You wasn't born with that, but it was placed into you. But we've got to learn how through the Spirit to wait. Yes, on the hope of righteousness. As a yes. born-again Christian, I know I'm not the only one that's ever found myself struggling and failing in defeat and just saying, oh my gosh, I just want to live a righteous, holy life. I, wanna, I want God to be pleased in my life, but I don't know how to do it. Am I alone? Have you been there yet? As a Christian, have you been there yet? Ooh. Wanting to live for God, but yet not knowing how and not understanding. That's right, man. Listen, sometimes you just got to wait. That's right. Yes. You just got to stand fast. You just got to hold on and you just got to wait for the hope of righteousness. That's That's by faith. You've got to wait for that. Sometimes you just got to dig in and bear in and and, and hold on tight. That's right. To what? To what? To what saved you? That's right. Amen. To what saved you? That's what he says in verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. Praise God, yes, hallelujah. Wherewith Christ has made you free. You've got to understand, in the book of Ephesians, the Word of word of God tells us that it was at Calvary's cross that the Lord Jesus Christ, that He, he done away with the enmity. That was in us, that kept us from God. He did away with the enmity. He freed us at Calvary's cross through what He did for us at Calvary. And now oftentimes when we're learning this message of the cross, when we're learning Christ crucified, it becomes a mantra. And it becomes something that we try to repeat and something that we think is just a a magic uh, saying that we can say. And if we say this magic thing, uh, that means that we believe in it and everything thing's going to be all right, but I'm here to tell you, there's a process in this thing. You hear what I'm saying? There's a process that goes to learning how to to walk this thing out. It's not always easy. No, that's right. right. It's a painful process. It's It's a painful process. It really is. I'm finding that out more and more each and every day, but the thing about this process is it causes you to trust in God. It causes you to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It causes you to abandon yourself, to abandon rules rules and routines and regulations. It causes you to abandon everything that you would think to offer up to God and to cling to nothing but Calvary's cross, to cling to nothing but who Jesus is and what He did for you. Uh, yes. That's what God's plan will do to you. That's right, man. That's what God's plan will do to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. It'll bring you to a place of, oh, wretched man that I am. That's right. Who shall deliver me? 
from the body of this death just like it did with Paul in Romans chapter 7 and we've got to understand why that is first of all it's important for us to understand and I'm going I'm gonna go backtrack I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna take this slow and it might take us a couple of weeks to get through this but this is some good stuff good. you and I as human beings every human being since the time of the garden since Adam and Eve Every human being that's ever been born to earthly parents have been born with two natures. We've been born with the human nature Amen. and we've been born with the sinful nature. That's right. Amen. Now what you've got to understand about this human nature is that in this human nature, deep down in the root of man, in this human nature, there's a moral code. That's right. That God placed in mankind. What you talking about, preacher? Well, the Word of God says that when God made Adam, that He created him after His image. That's right, That's right man. He created him after the image of God. So when He created Adam after the image of God, now listen, He didn't create Adam as a God. No, man, that's right. Adam was never a God, but He was created in the likeness and the image of God. That's right, man. That's right. Therefore, He was given a moral conscience, a moral code that, that told Him and implanted in Him the right way, which was to follow God and to, to live after God. And then what happened? When, when, when Adam, when he partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Amen. the sinful nature entered in. I love how Matt says it, that when, when Adam ate of whatever he ate of, the, the, the sin nature wrapped around his DNA. It wrapped around. You ever seen a DNA strand? Cameron had to make one from not too long ago for school, and it just twists. It's a bunch of little, I don't even know what they are, a bunch of little things that make you who you are. But in the garden, in, during the fall, sin wrapped around that DNA. That's right. It intertwined around that DNA and now it's part of who we are and we have a sinful nature yeah. and we have a, a human nature. That's right. Amen. And, and unfortunately now the human nature is corrupted. Yes, it is. It's corrupted and it's controlled yeah. by the sinful nature. Amen. The human nature, the flesh, the human nature that's in us it cannot overpower the sinful nature. No. No. It can't. Oh, you might be able to overpower some sinful deeds, but you can't overpower the sinful nature. That's right. Get out. In other words, you're corrupted. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do about That's that. That's right. Get out. Now, let's understand that some people are, in our terms, more corrupted than others. That's right. And let me explain it like this. This is something that the Lord revealed to me some time ago in, in dealing with different things. And, uh, and I'll just, I'll, I'll deal with the realm of homosexuality. Because when you, when you take someone that that's claims to be born a homosexual, they say, I've known this about myself since I was a young child, since the time I could think and walk and talk. I knew there was something different about me. And the first thing religious people cry out and scream is, You wasn't born like that. God didn't make you that way. And that's when we have to step back and stop and realize, God didn't make Adam and Eve that way. No, that's right, he did. But everyone after Adam and Eve have been tainted with sin. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Everyone since Adam and Eve have been tainted with the power of sin. So while God didn't make them that way, they are a result of being born under the curse of sin, being born under the image of their father Adam. That's right, amen. So in a sense, they are born that way, but God didn't make them that way. No, God only made Adam and Eve. That's right, amen. God made Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve made everybody else. That's right, man. You hear what I'm saying? That's, That's right. Everybody else was made as a result of Adam and Eve, and everybody else was under the curse of Adam's sin. That's right, man. They were under the curse of Adam's sin. That's true. Not Eve's sin, Adam's sin. You see, because Adam was the representative man. That's true. Eve, Eve wasn't even in the garden when God told Adam, don't eat of this tree. That's right, man. She wasn't there yet. Adam was there. He was the representative man. Yes. So we're all a result of Adam's fall. Amen. That's right. Born under the curse. Uh -huh. Born under the power of sin. Inclined to go in the wrong direction. Inclined. We have a bent towards what's wrong. We have a bent towards what's opposite of God. That's right, man. 
the sinful nature. Yes. We're corrupt. That's where we are. Even the good in us That's right. is corrupt. Yes, amen. God has placed a moral code within yes. humanity. Yes. That's why you can go just about anywhere in the world, even to some far off tribe, and they will have their tribal council set up, and they will have some form of right and wrong and law set up, even if they've never heard of any laws out of, out of uh, the rest of the world. They have it set up because God has placed a moral code in them. That's right. But that moral code has been tainted. Yes. And it's easily seared. What do you mean it's easily seared? Ten years ago, the things that humanity accepts today was frowned upon. That's right. Ten years ago. That's right. But because the moral code is constantly seared by man's sinful nature and man continually goes further and further and further in the bent, further away from what's God, further away from what God says is right and wrong, they continually, we go further and further. You can see it throughout the ages. That's right. I can see it just from the time that I was a kid till I've been growing and I see it year by year changing and changing and we accept more and more. That's right. Of what God says is wrong. Why? Right. Because we're bound by sin. Amen. That's true. We're bound by the power of the sinful nature. What you've got to understand about the sinful nature is that the sinful nature is the second most powerful law that's ever been created, that's ever been enforced by God. The, sin, the law of sin and death is what it is. Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. The law of sin and death is the most powerful law in the cosmos. Oh, it's more powerful than gravity. See, man, in his wisdom, can buck gravity and fly to the moon. That's right. But man can't overcome the sinful nature. No, nope, that's right. They cannot do it. Can't do it. No. Can't overcome the sinful nature. He can fly to the moon. That's right. But he can't overcome the sinful no. nature. No way. It's the second most powerful law that's ever been created. Do you understand our dilemma, church? Do you understand our problem? Amen. We have a situation. Mankind has a situation. He's bound by sin. Yes. He's oh. bound by the power of sin. That's right, man. That's so true. And our human nature is tainted because of that. That's right, man. It's tainted. So everyone that's ever been born, that's ever been born, because Adam and Eve were not born, they were created. That's right. Everyone that's ever been born except one man, the man, Christ Jesus, who did not have an earthly father, so therefore he was not tainted no. with sin. That's right. That's you right. see God's plan. Yes, amen. Amen. God said the seed of the woman right, man. is going to crush the head of the serpent. That's right, man. When my eyes were opened up and I read that, I said, Lord, the woman don't have no seed. No. <laughs> The man has a seed. Woman don't have no seed. It's the seed of man that was tainted that's right, with that's sin. Right. Yes, that's true. And everyone who's ever been born of an earthly man uh -huh. is born of a tainted seed. That's true. And you understand what I'm saying? Amen, that's right. How does this plan work? Well, let's look at the two figureheads. Christ, uh, Adam. Adam, the, the head of the human race was not born of an earthly seed. He was created by God. Amen, that's right. He was created by God. He had no earthly father and he had no earthly mother. No. Christ Jesus had no earthly father, but he had an earthly mother. That's right, he did. But he was not tainted no. with the seed of mankind. He was not tainted with sin. And Christ no. Jesus, the Word of God, calls him the second Adam. That's right. The second Adam. In other words, he came to fulfill and restore what the first Adam lost. Yeah, that's right, man. He came to restore what, yeah. the, what the first Adam lost. Yeah. What did the first Adam lose? He lost relationship with God. Yes, he did. Oh, yes. He forfeited relationship with God. That's right, yes. He forfeited relationship yes. with God for the knowledge of good and evil. That's for the knowledge of this world. Mm -hmm. He forfeited that. He gave it up. That's right, he did. And soon he realized that. Uh -huh. He really, Right away, immediately Adam knew that. How do you know that? Well, because the Word of God says he hid from God. Yes, he, did. he hid himself from God. When God came down into the garden, and it's the same thing that man does today. <laughs> Mankind's humanity hides their self from God in religion. Mm. 
They hide themselves from God in good deeds and good acts, or they just flat out deny God and hide from Him that way. But God is ever calling for mankind. He's ever calling for humanity. So, mankind is a problem. But what Christ did at the cross for you and I, He came and He represented us at Calvary's cross because the wages of sin is death. He came as a perfect lamb. He came as a perfect sacrifice. Amen. He came as a perfect human being, as a representative man for you and I. This is how God's plan works. Yes, we are penalized for Adam's sin, but we are also blessed for Christ's for Christ, um Obedience. That's right, man. Yes. We're penalized as humanity for Adam's rebellion. That's true. Yes. But we can also be blessed. Amen. That's right. For Christ's obedience. That's right. Amen. All we have to do is accept that. That's right. And there's benefits that come with that. Church, you've got to understand there's benefits Ooh, yeah, right. that come with accepting Christ. There's benefits yeah. that come right. with accepting right. the second Adam. Yeah. There's benefits that yeah. come through our relationship with God the Father yeah. through yeah. Jesus Christ and what He did for us at Calvary. Yeah. And the first benefit of that is that our sins are washed away. Yeah, man, that's right. Hallelujah. Our sins are washed away. Yeah. Brother Robert, the Word of God says that God cast our our sins into the seas of his forgetfulness. That's right, man. That's right. He forgets them. Yes. He casts them as far as the east is from the west. That's right. Oh, Jesus. See, and, and if we look at it on a globe realm, east and west meet up, but in the realm of eternity, east and west go forever. Amen. That's they right. just go and they go and they go. In other words, you'll never see them again, and neither will he. All because you've accepted Christ Jesus. So yeah. you're forgiven of sin. Right. Your sins have been washed away. Yeah. Amen. That's right. You don't have to be held down by your sin any longer. Well, another benefit of this is that now you can enter into relationship with God the Father through what Christ did for you at Calvary's cross. You can enter, enter into a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Him. And that was His goal, was that our sins would be forgiven so that we could have a relationship amen. with Him. Yes, amen. He wants a relationship That's with you. Right. Lisa, He wants a relationship with you. He Ooh. wants a personal one-on-one -on -one yes. relationship right. with you. Yes, amen. That's what He wants from us, church. Yes. That's true, man. He, wants, yeah. he wants access into our hearts oh, yeah. and into our lives. That's right, man. So that He can move upon our hearts. Yeah. So that He can move upon our life and cause us to desire Him. Amen. So He can cause us Amen. That's right. to seek His face. Yes. Yeah. Because the truth of the matter is that without God's Spirit, working in us without God's Spirit doing something in us the Word of God says that none seeketh after Him. That's right. That no man seeks God. No. But yet He draws us Amen. That's right. unto Amen. Himself. He draws yes. us yes, into a... He's a good God. Yes, He is. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes, you know he's a good God. Yes. He... he He's the one that sent His Son to die on our behalf so that we can be forgiven, so that He could draw us mm -hmm. even when we weren't looking for Him. He could draw... Abraham wasn't looking for God. No, he wasn't. Abraham wasn't looking for God. That's right. But God drew him. Yes, He did. Hey, man, He called out Praise to him. God, yes. That day in the garden, Adam, he wasn't looking for God. But God was looking for him. That's right, he was. Even before that, the Word of God doesn't say that Adam would go to God to talk to him. No, the Word of God says that Adam would come, that God would come to the garden to Adam. That he would come to Adam. Even before the fall, mankind wasn't looking for God. But God was coming to him. That's good. To sup with him. Yeah. To walk with Him. Yes, amen. To talk with Him. What yes. you've got to understand, church, is God wants to have a personal relationship with you. That's right. Amen. Another benefit. That's right. Is that He set us free. Yes, He did. From the power and the dominion of yes. sin. Thank you, Lord. He set us free from the bondage of sin. Amen. He set us free from oppression and depression. That's right. Amen. He set us free from fear. Yes. 
He set us free from all of these things. Amen. And the Apostle Paul tells the Galatians right here now, what we, the Galatians, what was taking place with the Galatian church is that the Judaizers were coming in. The Word of God says that there was a sect of the, either the Pharisees or the Sadducees that believed on Jesus. They believed on Jesus. But they never let go of the laws. They never let go of circumcision and this and that. And the Judaizers came in and they tried to bring to the Galatians circumcision. They tried to bring to, to the Galatians Jewish laws and tell them, yeah, Christ is good and He's the way, but you've got to have this. That's right. And you've got to have that. And what happened to the, to the Galatians is their faith was, was shifted from Christ and what He did for them. And it was shifted to the action of circumcision or to the act of doing something. Well, how does that translate to us? It translates to us in the sense that we are always so quick to transfer our faith from who Christ is and what He did for us to give us access into God's presence into something that we must perform. We even do it with the message of the cross. Amen. We do it with the knowledge that we receive. Yes. Listen, this is, this is what I've loved about learning the message of the cross is that the message of the cross explains the Word of God. That's right, man. Have you... I, I, as you've begun to learn the message of the cross and, and speaking to some of you who's been sitting under this for some time, have you realized how much more that you understand about the Word of God now? Yes, amen. That you're starting to have an understanding of what Christ did for you? That's right. It's amazing how much it opens up the yes, Word. That's right, man. And ties it all yes, in together, amen? Right. But what happens is, for us, is oftentimes our faith is transferred and switched. Uh -huh from who Christ is and what He did to what we know about who Christ is and yes, what He did. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Right. We begin to trust in what we know about who Christ is and what He did for us at the cross rather than yes. just in who Christ is and what He did. Does that make sense? If you stop for a minute, can you maybe see that in your own life? I mean, I, I see it in mine. I could yeah. just be talking for myself, but this is just me personally. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And what happens when we do that is we, we cut ourselves off from the liberty gotcha. that we received in Christ Jesus. That's right. That's right. This is why that we preach against works and that we preach against telling people that you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to read more and pray more and all these things. It's because when people's faith is shifted, from their relationship with God through Christ Jesus and what gave them access to Him into the act of prayer, into the act of fasting or praying or reading their Bible or going yes. to church, yes. what happens is they're cut off from the, from the liberty, right the freedom. That's what yes. that word liberty means. They're cut off from the freedom that they received in Christ Jesus. What freedom? The freedom from sin. That's right, that. The freedom from the power of sin. Yes. One of the greatest benefits that we've received. So we're tainted. We have a sinful nature. Yes. And we have a human nature. And unfortunately the sinful nature has power over the human nature. And it tells it where to go. It tells us what we're going to do. The sinful nature is operated, motivated, controlled by the second most powerful law known to the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you that just so we can put our eyes on it in Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to them, that, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We've been set free from the power of sin through the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's a law in God's judicial system. It's a legal work, do you understand? It's a legality. Like I heard Brother Preston Nasal say on Crossline today, it's a judicial matter. Amen. Amen. This thing was set in the judicial system of God. That's right, Master. 
Do you understand anything about courts and judicial systems and being guilty and being not guilty? Well, in the high court of God, every man that's ever been born after his father Adam is guilty in the high court of God. And because he's guilty, he is under the control, under the power, under the bondage of the law of sin and death. For the wages of sin is death. And because of that, the sinful nature rules and reigns in your life it tells you who you are it tells you what you are gonna do it tells you why you are gonna do it it tells you when you are gonna do it that's right man that's right it tells you all of these things that's right and you have no control over the matter amen that's right the one who is a murderer at his core who from the time he's a young boy desires to kill. Mm, that's right. If he continues in that direction, he cannot stop himself. That's right, get up. He cannot say no. That's right, get Oh, you might be able to say no to murder, but there's something that you can't say no to. That's so true. There's something you can't stop yourself from doing. Amen. Oh, it might not be murder, it might not be fornication or adultery, but it's something. Amen, that's right, amen. Oh, it's something. There's something in your life right. that you can't stop yourself from doing. Right. And maybe your mama don't know about it, and maybe your daddy don't know about it, or your husband or your wife don't know about it. But let me tell you something. God knows about it, and the Word of God will show it to you if you'll let it. And then you'll have to come to the conclusion, if you're honest with yourself, that you're guilty and you can't stop unless that's the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. would set you free. Right. You've got to be set free yeah. from the power of sin. Yes. You've got to be set free. That's why you ain't no better in God's eyes than Adolf Hitler. That's why in God's eyes you ain't no better than Napoleon Bonaparte or, or Jeffrey Dahmer or any of the rest of them. You ain't no better. Oh, you can put yourself on another level if you want to. But when you stand before God, it won't matter. Not at all. Because you're not the judge anymore. That's right. He is. Amen. He is. That's right, man. So it don't matter what you think That's about yourself. Right. That's right. <laughs> when it's all said and done, you'll stand before Him. Oh, yes. And you'll either stand in the blood or you'll stand saying, well, I wasn't like them. Yes. And then He'll look at Jesus and say, yeah, but you wasn't like Him. Oh, you might not have been like them, but you ain't even close to them, to Him. As a matter of fact, you're closer to them than you are to Him. Yeah, man, that's right. He's the standard. That's right, man. Oh, yeah. He's the standard. That is so true. In God's court. Yes, man. He's the standard. So we've got a dilemma, church. That's right. But the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Yes. From the law of sin and death. Amen. And there's no condemnation to those who walk after the Spirit. Here's the problem. This is where we as born again Christians have to learn how to walk. Amen. You've been born again. No, You're a brand new tea tie little baby. Oh yeah. In Christ Jesus. Amen. And guess what you've got to be taught to do? You've got to be taught to walk. That's right. Amen. You've got to be taught to walk in the Spirit. Amen. And not after the flesh. That's right. But unfortunately for so many years, Christians have been taught to walk in the Spirit mm -hmm. by walking after the flesh. That is so true. We've been taught to walk in the Spirit by walking after the flesh. What do you mean, preacher? This is what I mean. The preacher man tells everybody that the way you walk in the Spirit is by doing spiritual things. That's right, man. You walk in the Spirit by praying. Yes. You walk in the Spirit by fasting. Amen. That's right. You walk in the Spirit by going to church. Amen. You walk in the Spirit by doing this or by doing that. You walk in the, like Brother Luke said, you, you just got to, sometimes you just got to put on that song that makes you feel emotional and makes you cry and that's how you walk in the Spirit. Amen, that's right. 
And in reality, what they're doing is just like the Judaizers were doing to the Galatians. That's right. What they're doing is telling you all these things that you've got to do to walk in the Spirit of God. Amen. And in actuality, all they're doing is telling you that you need to be circumcised to be right with God. That's not what they're telling you physically, but spiritually, that's what they're telling you. That's right, amen. And they've got it mixed up and they've got it backwards. Well, yes. And we've got to learn how to walk in the Spirit by way of faith. You see, the Word of God says the just shall live by faith. Yes. Yes. Listen, let me stop for a minute. I know I'm saying a lot of stuff tonight. And I hope I'm not boring you, and I hope I'm not depressing you, and I hope I'm not losing you. But listen, if I, if I am losing you a little bit, it's okay. Just, just stick with me. If you'll stick with me, we'll continue to look at this thing over and over and over. And, and we're going to learn it together. We're going to run it together. That's right. We're going to learn this together. You stick with me, and I'm going to stick with you. And we're going to learn this thing together. And we're going to learn. Amen. We're going to learn how to walk. Yes. Amen. We're going to learn how to walk in the Spirit. That's right. I don't have it all together yet, but you know what? I'm getting an understanding. That's right, man. You're... I'm getting an understanding. Yeah. Not just from the knowledge that the Lord's given me or the knowledge I've learned from studying after other people, but I'm getting an epignosis. Yes. An experiential knowledge. Amen. That's beginning to take place in my life, and I'm, I'm starting to understand a little bit. But what you've got to understand is that just like a young baby learning to walk, this spiritual walk, you're going to fall down. Oh, yes. You will fall. You're going to hit your head on some spiritual right. counters every yeah. now and then. Oh, yes, you will. It's going to hurt. Oh, yeah. It's going to be painful. That's right, you will. But you've got to stick with the process. Amen. That's right. You've got to stick with our Father's plan. Yes. Because through our Father's plan, we'll learn how to walk. That's, that's right. We'll learn how to walk. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, we're born with two natures, but that's why man, so that's why man must be born again. Amen. That's right, man. That's why man must be born again. That's yeah. why the homosexual must be born again. That's right. That's why the murderer must be born again. Yeah. That's why the fornicator. Right. That's why the adulterer. That's why the liar yeah. must be born again. Such as was some of you. Amen. And I. That's right. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. Right. And the reason for this being born again is so that God could place into us the third nature. Yes, amen. That's right. So that God can place into yeah. us something else. That's right. Second Peter chapter 1. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I'll prove it to you. See, I'm not just going to tell you something. We're going to go to Scripture and we're going to look at it. Yes. 2 Peter chapter 1. Oh my Jesus. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of... Remember, that righteousness, church, is important. That's right, man. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus is important. Therefore. Through the righteousness of God in our Savior, Jesus Christ, yes. grace and peace be multiplied unto you through what? The knowledge of God. Yes, amen. And of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me stop here real quick and let me make something clear. I have recently encountered a situation to where I was called high-minded and I thought more highly of myself than what I really was. And in all reality, and God knows my heart, I was attempting to help someone to better understand something. But I was called high-minded and, and things like that because I tried to challenge this person so they thought. And it was a, a, a word of correction, but in reality, all I was trying to, and God knows my heart because I've, I've started to, before I just say things, and the Lord's really doing a lot in me, and He's still got a lot to do in me. But before I say things, I try to stop and evaluate my motives. I stop, I try to stop and say, okay, are you doing this to be right? Or are you doing this to help someone else be right? So I stopped that day and I did that. I, 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 I evaluated myself and I said, why are you doing this? And I really, inside of me, I desire to help this person out. But I messed up because you see, in my spirit, I felt a check from the Holy Ghost telling me, don't do this. 
You're wasting your time. But you know what? I listened to my own motive. I had a good motive. My intention was right. But the Holy Spirit said, don't do this. And I didn't listen to him. I didn't yield to him. And I did it anyway. And as a result of it, it caused someone to think I was being high-minded. And I wasn't being high-minded. I was really trying to help them. I was trying to help them to understand that what they were thinking walking after the Spirit is, is actually walking after the flesh. And you can't walk after the Spirit by walking after the flesh. And the result of that will be failure. No matter your intentions or how sincere you are, if you attempt to walk after the Spirit by means of the flesh, it will produce failure in your life. It don't matter how sincere you are. God has a way that He set in order that He does things. Amen, that's right. So... Basically, what I'm getting at is there's some things we've got to learn, church. That's right. That's good. And I understand that Paul talked about the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's a simplicity. Yes. Here's the simplicity. Oh, yes. It's all about who Christ is That's right. and what He did. Amen. That's true. It's simple. That's right. It's easy. Yes. But there's also right. some complicated things to that. That's right. I believe, I believe either John or Peter, I believe it was John, told us, and, and, and I'll find it, I'll find it, um, that these things our brother Paul speaks of, that they're difficult to understand. He said they're difficult to understand, but they're the right way. So we've got to understand there's some things we've got to learn. And yes, it's simple in the fact that it's all about who Christ is and what He did. But along this process of learning... There's going to be some difficult things to try to come to an understanding of why. Because your, your flesh is going to fight every step of the way. Do you hear what I'm saying? Your flesh is going to fight it. But there's some things we've got to know, church. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of, our, and of Jesus our Lord. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. What has He given unto you tonight? What has He given unto you? All things that pertain to what? Life and godliness. That's right, amen. What do you got to do? Live a life. That's right. According to godliness. Amen. He's given you everything you have need of. You ain't got to earn it. Nope. You ain't got to try to work it up or conjure it up. You've got to learn how to do what? Walk in it. That's right. Amen. You've got to learn how to walk in it. Into what? Into You've got to learn to walk in what He's given you. Amen. He's given, given. Get, that means given. Yes. Right? If I was to give Pete... Everything I own, give it to him. That means he don't owe me nothing. He ain't got to do nothing for it. Amen. But unfortunately, on human terms, see, this is our human thoughts and this is how we do things. Let me equate this. A lot of times, we do things for people. And in the back of our mind, we're expecting something back. That's right, man. That's, right, That's true. Well, and, and what happens is whenever they don't fulfill those expectations, a lot of times we like to say, man, you, what about what I did for you? You don't remember what I did for you? Ain't that how we are? That's how we are. That's, that's, right. that's exactly how. We're all that's like right. that. We're always like that. Yeah. We might not act on it and sometimes we suppress it, uh -huh. but it's there. That's right. But with God, yeah. <laughs> His ways are not our ways. That's right. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He's much higher than we are. And when He said He's given us all things, it means He's given us all things. That's right. Amen. All He requires of us is to walk in them. Amen. And once again, what does the Word of God say? That we walk by faith. Amen, that's right. We walk by faith, not by yeah. sight. The just shall live by faith. Am I, am I boring you tonight? No, that's right. Am I boring you with this? This is God's plan. That's right. That's right. This, we're, we're just taking our time. He's given us yeah. all things that pertain yeah. to life that's and right. godliness. Amen. Through the knowledge, through the what? Once again, the knowledge. 
of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Once again, church, you're going to have to learn some things. That's right. Amen. Don't get mad when the preacher or teacher is no. trying to teach no. you something that maybe you don't understand all the way. Listen, if it's all about who Jesus is and what He did, you need to eat it up. That's right. Amen. Eat it up. Because you're going to have to come to a knowledge of some things about Him. Amen, that's true. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be what? Partakers, look, partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. That's right. So he placed in you a third nature. Yeah, that's right. The divine nature. Right? right? So now what you need to do in the divine, what does divine mean? God, godly. That's right. He yeah. placed in you a godly nature. That's he right. placed in you the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's right. That's right. The Holy Spirit. Yes. Now you've got a desire yes. to do God things. Yes. You've got a desire to say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory to yes. God. Yes. You've got a desire to worship Him. You've got a desire to read His Word. You've got a desire to talk to Him. You've got a desire to walk with Him. You've got a desire to tell somebody else about what He done did in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Because He filled you with His Holy Spirit. That's right. He filled you with His nature. That's right. Amen. Yes. He filled you with His nature. Praise God. Did you do that? Oh, or did He do that? He did it. That's he did it. That's right. And everything that comes out of you from that day forward, according to God, is a result of what He did and is doing in you. Amen. That's right. It's not a result of what you're doing. The only thing you did was realize that there ain't nothing that you can do. That's right. That... There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can did. There's nothing. Oh. Except to come before Him. Yes. Amen. In a heart of repentance. Yes. And ask Him to come into your heart. Amen. That's right. And when you do that, and you're born again, your daddy has placed in you his nature. Amen. That's right. <laughs> now, God. now you're born of the seed yes. of your Father in heaven. Yes, Amen. That's you're born right. of the seed of Christ. Yes, Lord. You're placed into a new sphere. Oh, Jesus. God has placed Lord. His Holy Spirit in you. Yes. 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 And now it's time to learn how to walk. Amen. Yes. But the thing about us is, when we're walking and we're growing in this thing, Amen. Oh. the more we learn to walk, yes. we don't walk further away from our daddy. No. We walk closer. Close, yeah. Amen. We walk closer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As we grow and learn, we start to walk closer and closer to him. Close, yeah. Because yeah. we realize the further we get away, the more messed up we get. That's right. So now you've got three natures in you, church. You've got a human nature, you've got a sinful nature, and you've got a divine nature. Amen. And now becomes the process of learning how to walk after the Spirit, which is walking after the divine nature. That's true, man. Influenced by the Spirit of God. Yes. And here's where we get into trouble when we try to walk after the Spirit by way of the human nature, by way of the flesh, because the human nature, the flesh, is ruled by the sinful nature. That's right, man. That's true. And when we try to walk after the Spirit by way of the flesh, what happens is the sinful nature begins to rise back up. Amen, that's right. He begins to flare back up when we frustrate the grace of God and we try to, to receive from God. What only we can receive by faith. And I don't know how long I've been preaching. It feels like it might be a good little while. But I, I've still got... I hadn't even got into the, the, the surface of where I really want to get. Church tomorrow. <laughs> he said, we're going to have revival. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? This is really laying some good groundwork. That's right, it is, yeah. Because I, I, I think I'm not going to wait till next Wednesday to get back into this. I'm going to get back into it Sunday morning. Praise God, yes. And we're going to continue to talk about this some more because, you see, the flesh wants you That's right. to attempt to live for God uh -huh. by way of the flesh. The flesh wants to please God. Now, see, the divine nature has been placed in you, and you've got a desire to please God. Amen, that's right. And that, that enters into your core, and, and you want to please God. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You want to please God now. That's 
right. which is good. Yes, amen. But the problem goes about when we try to please God by way of our flesh. Mm -hmm. If it's not of faith, what does the Word of God say? It's sin. That's right. What's not a faith is sin. That's right. It is sin. So when you try to please God by way of not faith, guess what it is? Sin. Sin. What pleases God? Faith. faith. And who Christ is. That's right. And yeah. what Christ did for you yes. at Calvary. Right, and it's God. learning how to walk after the Spirit. To walk after the Spirit walking in the realm. What does walk mean? Walk means order your life. That's right, man. It means order your life yes. in the spirit, That's right. in the That's spiritual right. realm. Yes. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, the Word of God says, mm -hmm. so walk ye in Him, rooted and built up, established, mm -hmm. what? In the faith. That's right. That's right, man. We've got to learn to walk by faith, church. But everything that's in us tries to pull us to walking mm -hmm. by what we do. And this is it's, it's a journey of falling and stumbling and, and struggling until we, we continually are brought to a place to where we cry out to God and we're saying, Oh, Lord, teach me. That's right. That's teach right. me, Lord. Yes. I've gained all this knowledge, but make it real in my life, Lord. Yes. Yes. Let me no longer look to what I say or what I know, but let me look back to you, Lord. Yes. And you make this what I've come to know right. real in my life. Right, Hallelujah. Walking in the Spirit. Yes. Let me just tell you this, church. Walking after the Spirit is not anything that you do physically. No. Walking after the Spirit is only done by faith. Amen. It's only done by faith. That's right. And when we as a church properly walk after the Spirit, guess what happens in our life? Spiritual things. Yes, amen. Spiritual things. That's right. yeah. No longer are you working to do spiritual things to try to walk after the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But rather, you're walking after the Spirit and the Spirit of God motivates you to do spiritual things. Oh, Jesus, you yeah. see the difference? Jesus. Man, I used to always want to read my Bible, man, and I can't even barely open it no more. That's because it's a work. That's right, man. It's That's become a work to you, and yes. you need the Spirit of God moving in you. That's right. I, man, I've, I've listened, I'm, and I know I said I'm closing. I'm still about to close. Just give me another 30 or 40 minutes. I've talked to so many Christians, older Christians, that their mentality, it's like Matt always says, is like his daddy used to tell him, boy, you just got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and get it done. That's right. Their mentality is, you just got to read that Bible. Even when you don't want to, you got to get down in there and just read it. And that's, that makes God happy. Amen. That's right. It does. And that's what they teach us to do. But that's not right. Mm -hmm. You remember when you just couldn't wait to open it? Uh, yeah. You remember that? Amen. <laughs> when you just couldn't wait to open it? It was because the Spirit of God was moving in you. He was moving in you and He was motivating you and stimulating you. No, yes, amen. And we've got to learn how to walk after the Spirit. Yes, yes. So that those things are continually produced in our lives. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's part of the process. And we're going to get deeper into that this Sunday morning. This is what we're going to talk about. I'm telling you, it's some good stuff. Yes, we've got to know this. We've got to learn this. Yes. We've got to learn how to walk after God. the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's right. Later on, that's what we're going to look at uh, Sunday morning. The Word of God says that if you walk after the Spirit, walk after the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what that means is you will still, there will still be fleshly desires. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. There will still be lust of the flesh, but as you learn how to walk after the Spirit, you will learn how to... This is something that's becoming real in my life. I'm going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to close. I'm, I'm sorry. This excites me. It's, it gets me excited. Okay, this gets me excited. This is what I've been learning in my life. And Brother Swagger used to say this all the time. He said, choosing to He said, as a Christian, your, your choice is not whether or not that you're going to commit an act of sin or not. That's not your choice. It's not whether you're going to sin or not sin. But your choice is, are you going to overcome sin by God's plan? Or are you going to do it on your own? And if you set out to do it on your own, then you have no choice but to fall victim to sin. That's right, amen. That's right. And this is what's becoming a reaction. Whenever I used to hear him say that, it made sense to my brain. But now it's starting to make sense to my heart. 
Amen. and to my walk. We learn how to rest in Christ and we learn how to, to walk in Him as we continue and we learn how to just walk and, and, and those things, they come against us at times and, and as we don't struggle to not do it anymore. We don't fight the sin. We learn how to fight the fight of faith. And no longer are we struggling against sin because sin's been defeated. That's right, man. But rather we're fighting the fight of faith. Yes. And as we're learning how to fight the fight of yes. faith, the Spirit of God is working in us. Anybody who's ever fought a little bit knows you've got to train. That's right. And you've got to train hard. Yes. Pete fought for years, boxed, and he still never learned how to box. <laughs> I'm just picking on it. But hey, man, we're in a fight, church, and we've got to learn how to walk. Amen? Yes. We've got to learn how to walk. And, and we're going to dig more into this and deeper into this. And if I'm complicating you, if you have questions for me, look, don't hesitate to ask me. Don't hesitate to call me. Text me. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with you. I'll do whatever. I'll help you the best way that I can and point you to who Christ is and what He did. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord God, and we thank you for your wonderful plan. Lord God, we thank you. For, for how that you've come to set us free, Lord God. How that we can have a relationship with you. Lord God, I just ask that you would teach us, Lord God, your ways. That you would guide us. That you would fill us. That you would grow us, oh Lord God. Father God, I ask that you would make your word real to our hearts, Lord God. And let us not get, get complicated and, and get it twisted up, Lord God. Let your spirit make it real to our heart and to our life, Lord God. Let us grow in the grace and the knowledge of your son, Father. Lord, we ask that you would just keep us safe and guide us and lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.